I have to admit, I was really surprised hearing Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn's view on olive oil, and even more so when he discussed the Mediterranean diet. Dr. Esselstyn is a physician with a long history of favoring a plant-based lifestyle, at least at the time of this recording. In a recent interview by Dr. Gil Carvalho over at Nutrition Made Simple, which will be linked for you, Dr. Esselstyn had, well, <laughs> this to say about olive oil. I wrote a paper called Is Oil Healthy that was published in the International Journal of Disease Reversal and Prevention in 2019. Half of the paper was, I reviewed the animal studies that injure endothelial cells, and I reviewed the, reviewed the human studies I found, and uh, that showed that uh, animals, uh, that, the protein, that oil would injure endothelial cells, and I cited with the appropriate references. So the, this is one of the main arguments that I've heard, this idea that after eating, for example, olive oil, flow-mediated dilation is inhibited postprandially, this is one of the arguments that it then damages the endothelium, and so we should avoid oil. This is the gist of the argument. Well, there's a paper in there that very clearly it shows how olive oil, palm oil, and others uh, injure endothelial cells. In short, he published a short scientific review of the literature on oils and their impact on heart disease with a special emphasis on olive oil. In this interview and in his review, Dr. Esselstein mentions that olive oil causes damage to the endothelial cells. If you aren't familiar with endothelial cells, they're the cells that align your arteries and play a significant role in blood pressure control, as well as many other areas of cardiovascular health. If they're damaged or injured, that's not a great thing for our health. So what evidence does Dr. Esselstein cite is olive oil truly dangerous to our endothelial cells? Well, in this review, he cites this study wherein the researchers measured flow-mediated dilation, which is simply a measure of how well your arteries open or widen, which is controlled partially by endothelial cells. The researchers gave the same group of people two different meals, either a low-fat, high-carbohydrate meal or a higher-fat, lower-carbohydrate meal, with the fat content being monounsaturated as we'd find in olive oil. They ended up showing, I'll show you the data, but for some reason it's extremely pixelated, so I'll have to draw over it in scale for you. Either way, you can see that the white dots correspond to the low-fat high carbohydrate meal, and the black dots are the higher fat meal. Clearly, flow mediated dilation was different at three hours post meal and greater dilation in the low fat group. This speaks to Dr. Esselstein's point. Interestingly, there's another study directly looking at olive oil confirming these results. Okay, so this measure of artery dilation indicates olive oil impedes artery dilation. Now, unfortunately, unless we also think that exercise is detrimental to our health, this line of evidence is very weak because exercise also worsens flow-mediated dilation, yet long-term exercise improves heart health. Actually, here's Gill making the same point. I found that the effect on, on flow-mediated dilation seems to depend on the type of fat. So with olive oil, they see this inhibition right after eating olive oil. But for example, with canola oil, no statistically significant effect on FMD. Eating fish, no significant effect on FMD. Eggs also. So I, basically, the as I was going through this kind of systematically, this postprandial effect seems to depend a lot on the type of fat. It's not. It doesn't seem to be a, a consistent effect of fat depressing FMD. That was one thing that I that I noticed. Um, and then another thing uh, that I thought was even more interesting was that it depends on the timing. So. Lots of things seem to affect FMD kind of acutely. After exercise, they see FMD be depressed, but then long-term exercise improves artery function. And with olive oil, the same pattern, after a meal, we see FMD inhibited, but long-term in several trials, they see FMD improving on olive oil interventions. So it just seemed to me that the, the, the FMD argument uh, was not very compelling based on the evidence that I've seen. 
Agreed. All around. I think Gil nailed it here. And as further proof to the point, an analysis of this very topic, including 28 randomized trials lasting many weeks to many months, indicates, as seen here, that olive oil improves flow-mediated dilation. I'm going to simplify this and just point you to the highlights here. There are different subgroups of what olive oil was compared against, but we're most interested in the bottom black diamond here, which corresponds to the overall effect, all subgroups included. If the black diamond falls to the right, it indicates improved flow mediated dilation with olive oil. And we can clearly see that it does. And the statistics check out as well. Keep in mind, this was a detected effect with only eight studies, not the full 28. And the level of heterogeneity or variability in the results was pretty low, which increases our confidence in the results. I think this is a perfect example of tiered evidence in science. Remember, well-conducted meta-analyses pull together many studies and apply statistics to these studies anew, which is the top tier line of evidence, especially in randomized studies. So while Dr. Esselstein offers some evidence, if we zoom out and include more of the literature, the picture shifts dramatically and convincingly in opposition to his point. I have more to say on this in a bit, but let's hear what Dr. Esselstein has to say about the Mediterranean diet. Yeah, the Predomed study, and I, I can remember there was a uh, reporter from the New York Times after the paper came out that uh, called me and said, Dr. Esselstein, this seems to disagree with your philosophy, what do you think of it in the paper? And I said, well, I, I said, I hadn't seen it. So she sent it to me and I said, the title of the paper is The Mediterranean Diet Inhibits Formation of Heart Disease. They have three groups, an oil group, a nut group, and then a low fat group that was not low fat at all. Yeah. And over the course of five years, in these 5,000, I think it was 5,000 patients, uh, they found that in the oil group, I forget, it was something like 80, 85 to 86 major events, something like 93 in the nut group. And then, of course, in the low-fat group, which was not a low-fat group, it was like 100 and something. So I, I, I said, no, I want to be sure I, I, because I talked to her on the phone, I said, uh, they're, they're claiming that the Mediterranean diet halts the progression of heart disease. But remember, every single patient who entered that study had to be checked and be sure that they did not have any heart disease. So in other words, they had, they didn't have, they didn't, they were documented as not having heart disease. And what I found is in all three groups, there had been scores of major cardiac events, heart attack, stroke, and death. And I think you've got the title wrong. The title should be The Creation of Cardiovascular Disease with the Mediterranean Diet. Okay, so in a large scale randomized human trial, the Mediterranean diet causes cardiovascular disease, according to Dr. Esselstein. Well, let's pull out our sluice magnifying glass and pop open this study. I think it would be unfair to hold Dr. Esselstein to remembering all the numbers. There's no way that I remember all the numbers of thousands of studies that I've read. So let's go ahead and look at them. The study recruited over 7,000 participants, and those people were put on a Mediterranean diet with that devilish olive oil, the Mediterranean diet with nuts, or a control diet, which to Dr. Esselstein's point, was it not very low dietary fat, as the participants consumed 30% of their nutrition as dietary fat. The study had some additional flaws or caveats, even if not flaws directly, like the fact that those on the Mediterranean diet were more compliant than those on the control diet, meaning that they stuck to the diet better, although the difference was rather small. Okay, either way, does this study indicate that the Mediterranean diet is leading to cardiovascular disease? Well, Dr. Esselstein points out that people entered the study with no cardiovascular disease, but that's not entirely true. If you read the study, here are the baseline health metrics before being put on each diet. The researchers assess cardiovascular disease at the beginning of the study by going through medical records, which means that none of these people had a previous history of cardiovascular events like heart attacks. But that does not mean that they don't have, for example, 
plaque buildup in their arteries or high blood pressure. In fact, the researchers characterized these participants as high risk of cardiovascular disease because the majority were overweight and had high blood pressure. And some had more than that, including half were on heart disease medications to avoid future problems. But what about the data itself? Well, let's look. We're looking at a chart of cardiovascular events like heart attacks, strokes, etc., over the five years. If the lines go up, that means that that group experienced more cardiovascular events, a bad thing. The control diet group is the black line and the Mediterranean diet groups are the other two lines. I probably don't need to spell it out for you, but the Mediterranean diet groups did better than the control. But you'll also notice that all three experienced some cardiovascular disease events, which seems to point in favor of Dr. Esselstein's point. But is that the correct way to interpret this data? Flatly, no. This data indicates the Mediterranean diet offers a protective effect, reducing the risk of cardiovascular events compared to the control. And yes, they still experience cardiovascular events. But keep in mind, that all of these people were already high risk of heart disease. So everyone out of thousands not experiencing an event over five years is highly unlikely on any diet because some damage has already been done. Now, before plant-based enthusiasts ethically decapitate me in the commentary to this video, I acknowledge that Dr. Esselstein is speaking from a position where a purely plant-based diet could reverse heart disease. So by that very high bar, it does seem that the Mediterranean diet would underperform. However, it is still an incorrect conclusion to state it as the Mediterranean diet causes cardiovascular disease for a number of reasons, from it showing improved results relative to the control to the fact that the cardiovascular disease is impacted by more than diet alone. I mean, think stress, arteriosclerosis factors, genetics, and more. The proper conclusion based on this data is that the Mediterranean diet outperforms a low to moderate dietary fat diet in reducing risk of cardiovascular events. If it might perform worse against a no oil or very low fat or even entirely plant-based diet is not tested here. Okay, so where does that leave things? Well, while I have respect for Dr. Esselstein and his work, I entirely disagree with his opinion here. I wanna be clear that I'm not taking anything away from his work nor his plant-based focus, merely disagreeing with his interpretation of the data, considering that one, there is much more data against his perspective on olive oil. On that topic, I didn't even mention that there are many studies indicating that olive oil improves many other metrics of endothelial health. So focusing almost exclusively on a metric like flow-mediated dilation is frankly baffling to me, especially since flow-mediated dilation is not necessarily just a metric of endothelial health. I digress, save for one more point, focusing on mechanisms ahead of clinical human data is not the order of things. We focus on higher quality evidence, and if there's an effect, then we can look to mechanisms to explain the results, not the other way around. So the flow mediated dilation angle makes little sense to me, especially when we have a prime example of how misleading it can be with exercise. And number two, his interpretation of the PREDIMED study is simply incorrect if we evaluate it systematically as we should any other study. And here come the, you're too young to understand, you're naive, and Dr. Esselstein has decades of experience on you. Anyway, I think Gil did a wonderful job in his interview, pushing back slightly on certain points. The interview is linked in the description. And if you're so inclined to check out this next video of further science dissection.